Today we'll be proving that the post correspondence problem is undecidable. So what is this problem? Here we're given a bunch of what are called tiles. So here's a tile, here's a tile, here's a tile, here's a tile. You can see that there is a string on top and the bottom. So the B is on top, CA is on the bottom, A is on top, AB is on the bottom of this tile, etc. And the question of the post correspondence problem is, I give you these set of tiles, is there a way that you can choose any number of each of the tiles so that if you join up all of the strings that are on the top, it equals the string on the bottom. So of all the tiles in the specific order that you selected them. So if we look at the string that's on the top of this, we have A, B, C, A, 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 B, C. And then if we look at the string right across the bottom in the same order, we see A, B, C, A, 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 B, C. It's the exact same string but it's not, uh, it's not exactly in the same places, but it's read as the same string. So the PC3 problem is, is there a match? And match means that the top of the string right across the top is the same as the string on the bottom for a set of tiles P where P is going to be the set with T1 and B1 as the first tile, etc. And let's say that there are K of them. Oops, I need to have that show. And what I want you to, what I'm gonna prove here is that this is undecidable, which is kind of surprising. Um, but the key here to notice is that the difference between what the top is at a current point uh, compared to the bottom can be arbitrarily big. So notice that it, in principle, could be possible that I repeat this tile, let's say, over and over and over, or this tile over and over and over before I switch the other ones. So the top could be arbitrarily bigger than the bottom. And there isn't any correlation between what the top and the bottom are until the very end where they have to be exactly the same. And uh, the proof of this is actually pretty slick, but what we're going to prove here is we're going to prove the modified post-correspondence problem. And, we'll, and I'll explain what that is in a sec, but then we'll get to the actual PCP problem. So the modified post correspondence problem is, it's the same here, it's, it's the same as the normal PCP problem, but a given tile has to start. Okay. And in fact, with the proof that I'm gonna do with the modified PCP, it cannot work for the PCP, so we'll have to <laughs> modify the proof. But the modified PCP is, let's say T1 is the first tile, is the one that has to start. So like in, in, this, in this set right here, if I said A, A, B, this tile had to start first, then this would be a match. If this one had to start first, then may, there may or may not be a match I haven't checked. So, uh, in fact, I don't even think that it, it could, because if you think about it, uh, this one starts with a C and then the bottom starts with an A. So if I made this one the start one, there's no possibility of it, um, uh, of there being a match. I, and another thing to note is if I include a, uh, in the original one, if I included a tile with an the same contents on the top and the bottom, I can just pick that tile. I don't have to pick any other tile. So I'm not required to pick every single tile, but it's just that um, I need to find some match with some number of tiles, and I can pick as many of each one as I want, which is another key. I can pick as many of them as I want, of each of them. Okay, so how are we gonna prove modified PCP? And the way that we're going to do it here is we're going to try to simulate 
a Turing machine. And here's the basic idea. And so the basic idea is that the top string, uh, actually I should say, um, the strings will have the computation history. So remember computation history is uh, a string representation of what the Turing machine is doing at a particular time. And second, we're going to have the top string is going to lag behind the bottom string by one transition. And why would, why would you want that to occur? Because we're going to insert tiles that will represent applying a single transition, okay? And by doing that, we will allow ourselves to record when a, tra a legal transition occurs, and then uh, we will only be able to have one of those for each of the configurations of the Turing machine. And the reason for that is that there's only one state in any configuration, and it's going to be in that state that in the tile that corresponds to applying that transition. There are going to be no other, st okay, there's going to be one or two, but the the thing, the, the tiles that are going to be for the configurations, there's only going to be one of them that's going to correspond to a state. And everything else, other than wherever the tape head is, is going to be exactly the same. So that's why I was mentioning that if you have a tile with the same top and bottom, is automatically going to be a match. So we have to use the modified problem in order to make this work because you could just pick that one tile and you got a match immediately. So we have to start with a particular tile and the starting configuration is going to help us here. So how do we start this off? So it's going to be in, uh, I think seven parts. So, uh, I'm going to have, I'm going to call them tile type. So tile type one is going to be a single tile. So a pretty simple tile. So it's gonna have a pound sign on the top and on the bottom, it's going to have pound sign. It has to have that because it's the one that's gonna start. Uh, actually, I'm gonna record that it's the one that has to start. I'm gonna use a different color here. So, so this one right here uh, has to start because it has the starting configuration in it. And on the bottom, it's gonna have Q0, W1 up to WN, pound sign. So the top is only gonna have one pound sign in it, and the bottom is gonna have, it's gotta start with pound sign, and then it's gonna have the starting configuration in it, okay? So at this point right here, since this one has to start, the top has no trans no configurations at all, and this one has one. So it's always going to be one behind in some sense. All right, so then what is the second tile type going to be? It's going to be, these next few are going to actually record the possible things that can happen. The second and third one are going to be about where the tape head is and what can appear on the top and bottom as a result. So for every, actually I'm going to write this in white. So for every uh, A and B in the tape alphabet. So this corresponds to reading. I should write this. So the A1 is what's being read on the tape. The B is what's being written. So remember that uh, we have to have a total transition function, which means no matter what we read, we better have a transition. So that means not every possible symbol might be written, but that's okay. Uh, because every the way that it's going gonna, it's gonna to fix itself later down the line. So this is just saying that uh, any possible thing that could be written, we're going to make a tile just in case for that. So for every A, a and B, in the tape alphabet, and and every P and Q in the set of states. So this 
So the P here is the source state, the place where we came from. The Q is the destination state. So no matter what could possibly occur in terms of any transition, and we're gonna actually make one qualification here where the Q state, uh, it, uh, sorry, I have this backwards, where P is not the reject state. So I'm gonna denote that as Q reject. So if P is not the reject state, there, that means there is a transition to apply at this point. Uh, then, then what we're gonna have here is, this is gonna to correspond to a right transition. So we're gonna, we're gonna ask the question, if the transition function, actually I'm gonna denote this pictorially. So if we have state P right here, going to state Q, and the transition is going to be reading an A, uh, writing a B, and trying to move right, then what we're going to do is we're gonna create a tile. So we're going to create the tile, and what's gonna be on the top and the bottom? Well, at this point, the in state P, we are reading the A at this point, and we wanna convert it to a B, move right and go into state Q. And the only way that that can occur is if P, if we have PA on the top, let me change colors here. So if we have PA on the top, so in the configuration, the thing that you're reading next to the state is always to the right of you. And so that means that this state, you know, the next state that we're going into, which is Q, better move right because we, the transition said to move right. So then the thing that was changed is the A, which changes to a B, and then we go to state Q. So we're going to create that tile, which corresponds to applying the transition at this point. And then for tile type three, it's very similar, but we have to be a little bit careful. So if we have all this, if we have a P going to state Q, and we have A being changed to a B and moving left, then in the same qualifications, A and B are in the tape alphabet, P and Q are states, where P is not the reject state, all the same qualifications, except this time we're moving left. Well, if we think about it, we can't do something like this because I need to be able to know what this is over here so that the state, when it moves left, is looking at the thing that was appearing right here. So the tile that we're gonna make is we're going to make a slight change in, the, in this right here. So instead of A, B in the stack alphabet, we're gonna have uh, for every A, B, and C in the stack alphabet because I don't know necessarily what's to the left of me. So I'm accounting that for all possible things that could appear there with a C. So the tile that we're going to make, so create tile. So the top is going to be pretty predictable. So it's gonna be C on the left and then PA just like before. But now the state has moved left. So that means that the Q state is gonna be here the C could not have been changed at this point because the state wasn't looking at it or the tape head wasn't looking at it. So the C is gonna be in the middle on the bottom and the A was changed to a B. So this is gonna be a B right here, okay? But for the fourth one, apart from where the tape head is, it's exactly the same from conf from configuration to configuration. So, uh, so that we recorded everything that could possibly occur around where the tape head is, but everywhere else in the configuration it is identical. So for every uh, possible tape character, we're going to create the tile. It's just a very simple tile with A on the top and the bottom. Make this pink. Oops, that should be pink. 
Yeah. So, uh, so this is the reason why we have to use the modified problem instead of the original one, because we can just pick this tile and you got a match. Whereas here we have to start with that very first one. Okay, so this is just recording uh, when, uh, for all of the tape characters other than wherever the tape head is. Okay, so what do we actually do here? So we are, at this point, we are recording every possible transition that could occur. Well, now we started off with these pound signs, so let's actually have a tile that corresponds to, okay, now we're matching the top and the, and the bottom uh, with the pound signs, I mean. So this next tile is also very simple. So tile type five, we're going to create the tile and it's very simple. It's just going to be pound sign on the top, pound sign on the bottom. But we're also going to have one, a different one right here. And it's actually pretty interesting uh, why we actually put this one in as well. So we're going to have pound sign upstairs, and we're going to also have blank pound sign. And why is this the case? So the bottom one is in the case where the transition, remember the bottom transition is, oh, sorry, the bottom string represents the configuration one ahead of the top. So this is saying, you, uh, the bottom configuration can acquire a, another cell. So this one's actually one of the most crucial tiles in the entire thing, because the Turing machine, uh, it may or may not acquire a blank symbol, which to the right of wherever the the work has been done so far. So this is saying that it's not the case that these match, it's that we acquired a, another cell entirely. So, uh, and we will have a mechanism of having these match later on. So like if we pick this one, so the blank better appear, uh, so this is what, this pound sign at the top is way behind, picture it as being way behind. So we need some way of having the the blank symbol actually appear later on, and that corresponds to either the transition or the or this tile right here. So remember, the A here could be a blank symbol, possibly. So that is tile type five. And what we're going to do is, well, these encode the entire transitions of the Turing machine. So, so if all of if there was a set of transitions at this point. Uh, that allowed us to eventually get to the accept state, then at some point we're going to have the accept state on the bottom and the top one not being an accept state yet. It will be in the next transition. The only problem is, is that the top is lagging behind the bottom by one whole transition. So we need some way of having the top catch up to the bottom. We had it lag behind so that we can record the transition itself, but now we got to let it catch up. So for tile type six, so here we're going to have for every A in the, in the tape alphabet. Now we don't have to worry about the transitions anymore. So we're not going to have things that look like transitions anymore. We're, it's entirely so that the top can catch up to the bottom. So we're going to create the tile, which looks like this. So we're actually gonna make two different tiles here. So the, the top one is allowing ourselves to uh, catch up uh, to the bottom by one character. So at this point, we better be in Q except. Um, and we're going to actually force it to uh, be in the accept state at this point. So we're going to have Q accept. Uh, the reason that we're going to force it to be uh, in the accept state at the end is that we are uh, only going to allow ourselves to catch up to the, to the bottom if and only if we are in the accept state at this point. So there's only a match if we hit the accept state. So we apply the transitions correctly and we end up in the accept state, which means that M accepts W. But the other one is, well, the character that we eat up, so to speak, 
it doesn't have to be left of the of the accept state necessarily it could be after so we're going to make two tiles here so it's going to be almost identical to the previous one except now we have the accept state being first followed by the a and then q accept at the bottom so we're going to have a bunch of times where we're going to eat one character up so the the top is going to catch up to the bottom by one character we're going to have exactly all the same information up to the pound sign again and then we're going to eat one more character in a set of other trans it, yeah so we're going to eat one more character the rest of the configuration is exactly the same so we're going to use this tile repeatedly and this tile semi repeatedly and we're just going to keep doing that until we uh, match up at the very end so there's only one tile left to uh to complete here so tile type seven so it's going to be a single tile and what does it look like it's going to allow ourselves to catch up at the very end. And it's for technical reasons why we need to have this in here. So we have Q accept at the top. And we're going to have two pound signs on the top and one on the bottom. So uh, I want you to actually think about why this is the case. So obviously this pound sign matches up with this one. But why are these here? So I, I want you to actually think about how those actually match up. Okay, so that is proving that the uh, modified problem is undecidable. And the reason is that ATM is. So if we have a uh, Turing machine and an input W, then what we can do is we can just, uh, we can just take uh, the, that Turing machine and the transitions and we can just be, uh, we can create all these tiles and they are encoding uh, all of the transitions of the Turing machine. And we have to start with this tile up here. We're required to start with it. So therefore we have that we are uh, simulating the Turing machine. And the only way that the top can match up to the bottom is if we hit the accept state at some point. Note that we only allow it to catch up if we hit the accept state. So that allows us to catch up and we only have a match if the Turing machine accepts W, which is pretty slick if you think about it. So it's just recording the information of the Turing machine and forcing it to go to the accept state, even though it's not really forcing it, is you can only get a match if you have the accept state at the very end, which is what the Turing machine is doing. All right, so now what I want to do is to prove the original problem uh, undecidable. So PCP is undecidable. So remember that the PCP original problem, you there's no specified tile you have to start with, whereas the modified one you have to start with this one no matter what. Here what we're going to do is we're going to modify the set of tiles from the modified problem in such a way so that there's no real choice other than to start with a specified tile. Because if you start with any other one, you cannot possibly have a match. It's not like you're forced to do it, but you're kind of semi-forced to do it. So uh, here's how this is going to work. It's actually pretty simple. So let's say we have tiles T1, B1, up to TK, BK. So uh, recall that these are are for the modified uh, problem tiles. So, uh, actually, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, so if we have uh, these tiles right here, then what we're, and let's say that T1 is the one that has to start. So this is the one that starts. And what we want to do is we want to convert it to a set of tiles for the PCP problem where T1 does not have to be the start one. The way that we're going to do this is we're going to create a new set of tiles which are based on the other ones. So create the following set of tiles. And the way that this is going to work 
is we're going to have a new character, which is going to be the star character. So I'm going to do this in a different color. Let's do it white. So I'm going to have a star here, followed by T1 over B1. Okay. And then uh, B1 is going to have a star on the left and to the right of it. And we're going to have a different copy of the same first tile because in theory, I could use this starting tile multiple times. So we're going to have a, uh, an, another copy of the T1 tile, which is going to be a star T1 over B1 star. So notice the difference between these two tiles. Let me move this over a bit. So the difference here is that uh, this one has the star starting on both of them, whereas this one doesn't. So star is a completely new character. In fact, I should even note that. So this star is a new character uh, that wasn't present before. So the only tile that's going to have the star uh, on the top and the bottom starting is this tile. So in some sense, you have to start with this tile, okay? Um, and the interesting thing is that you can't pick this tile twice be, uh, based on what we're gonna uh, do with the other tiles. So then what are the other tiles gonna be? Well, it's gonna be exactly the same as this one, except it's gonna be T2, B2, T3, B3, up to TK, BK. So then we're gonna have uh, uh, star T2 over B2 star, etc. And we're going to go all the way up to uh, K, so index K. So we have star TK over BK star. And there's going to actually be one more uh, tile that we're going to include. And the reason is that uh, once we get started, we have we essentially have to start with this tile. Once we start picking some of these other tiles, the top is going to be lagging behind the bottom by one star. So notice that all of these other tiles start with the star and end with the star. Uh, uh, sorry, start with the star at the top, but end with the star on the bottom. So we need to have the top catch up to the bottom in some sense. So we could, in theory, have a star and nothing on the bottom, but it turns out that uh, for technical reasons, and I want you to think about it, we need to have both the top and the bottom be empty. Uh, sorry, both be non-empty. They have to be both non-empty. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna uh, modify this very last tile by having a dollar sign on top and dollar sign on the bottom. So it's allowing it to catch up and the dollar sign is purely there because uh, we need to have both the top and the bottom be non-empty. And so if the original, the if these tiles did have a solution where the, or match, where the first one had to start, well, this one has to start with this one. And we can construct the same solution uh, using all of these other tiles and you essentially have to end with this tile. So then if we uh, have a solution here, so that effectively we have to start with this one, which corresponds to here, and then look at what the ordering of the tiles is after that, those directly correspond to the original ones because each one of these you can strip off the stars and find out the original tile you had. And you had to have ended with this particular tile on the end. You gotta make sure it's a set. So that finally shows that the post-correspondence problem is undecidable. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave comments about the proof of the pod, uh, both the modified problem and the original post-correspondence problem down into the comments down below. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.